two of the most important tools in JavaScript, Prettier and ESLint, finally have some really awesome competition. And it was even partly funded by Prettier themselves, kicking things into action when they announced a $20,000 bounty. Now, everyone knows these tools. Prettier has helped projects maintain a consistent code standard across developers, ensuring we all follow the same format and don't have different code styles within a project. And I know for me even, it helps me write code a lot quicker as I don't have to think about the format while I'm doing so. I know Prettier is going to pick it up when I save that file. Islint as well has made sure that we will follow those best practices and catch bugs before we push them live, particularly when you use something like React or Svelte or you bring in some extra projects. There's usually an ESLint plugin that's going to help you follow those best practices. Now, while these projects have been stable for many years, there has been complaints on the performance and complexity of them. I've seen people complain with Prettier, for example, that when you have a file of more than sort of 500 lines of code, the formatter does start to slow down. And this time does quickly add up as you're working on a big project. So let's take a look at Biome, the new alternative and how it all came to be, its pros and cons, and why I'm gonna switch over some of my projects to use it and why I won't switch over the other ones. And my reasons for this are largely not based in performance, but that is one of the main benefits of this project. This is a really good place to mention that if you want more web dev content like this, consider subscribing. So as I mentioned in the intro, Biome started to gain its popularity when the co-creator of Prettier here put out a tweet saying that he's offering a $10,000 bounty for any project written in Rust that passes 95% of the prettier JavaScript tests. Now, Guillermo, CEO of Vassell, actually put out a tweet saying he's gonna personally match this 10,000. So this bounty went up to $20,000. Now, obviously prettier being around for a while has a load of tests written in JavaScript to ensure that its formatter behaves the same way and that it's following all of the rules that they've put in place. So it's really awesome to see that a Rust based project could come in and test against all of those tests. And you would know that you'd pretty much have complete feature compatibility with Prettier there. Now, if you're wondering why Prettier would fund essentially their own competition here, they have mentioned that they wanted some competition in the space that they've been dominant for so long. So they haven't really had the need to focus on performance. And this is changing a bit now as they consider their formatting options pretty much near to feature complete and in a very happy state. So they're not going to add too much there. So they can now move on to focusing on this performance. Now, Biome itself had actually been a fork of a project called Rome, and Rome was a company that was created from various Babel maintainers to try and improve the web dev tooling. A few of them weren't done when the company itself actually went through, and they forked the project to keep working on it, and they ultimately ended up claiming this bounty, as I said, and they claim that they have 97% compatibility with Prettier here and that test, and you can see the performance gains here, claiming a 35x performance increase over Prettier in this benchmark. And if we actually go to that GitHub and look at that official benchmarks here, we can see it has 25 times faster than Prettier, but then also 15 times faster than ESLint performance as well. And as I said, this tool does both of those. So it takes on the role of ESLint and Prettier. So now let's look at my personal site and how easy it is for me to migrate over to Biome and the reasons that I'm going to do that and how they aren't actually speed related. So here we are in my personal project. Now, what I'm going to do first is obviously install the package. So we're going to install Biome.js slash Biome using PMPM here. And now what we can do is we can also do pmpm biome in it to make sure that we've got that configuration file. If I go ahead and clear this. Now what you'll see is if I minimize everything here, we now have a biome.json. Now this is gonna have the configuration that we need. And obviously this is the get started one. So it's just gonna have the linter enabled and organized imports. And it's just gonna say rules recommended. So it's just gonna use all of our recommended rules and their presets that they have there. For organized imports here, I'll tackle this a bit later as it's a really cool option there. And the next thing I want to do is I already have ESLIN and Prettier set up, so I want to migrate over quite nicely. Now, for ESLIN, all we have to do is use the command pmpm biome migrate ESLIN. And we're using this include inspired here as they don't actually have all of the rules that ESLint necessarily has, but it's going to go through my ESLint configs, find some of the rules where they have sort of ported over or been inspired by those rules, and then it's going to include them in my config as well. So we go ahead and write that. You'll see that my biome.json is going to change here. Now, there may be a few errors when you try this as it's sort of a helper tool. It's doing its best guess and its best approximation. It's not a perfect sort of tool in migrating over, but you'll see it's changed recommended to false and it's tried to apply the rules based on my ESLint config here. Funnily enough, though, I am actually going to delete some of these to make sure that I am just using 
the biome defaults as I think my ESLint config did get a bit over complex and some of these rules aren't actually needed now. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of them and then make sure I turn recommended back to true. But for prettier, the next migration we're gonna do, I'm gonna keep the rules that it migrates over for me. So I think I'm missing a, come on there. Well, let's go ahead and save it. So for Prettier, we pretty much run the same command here. We don't need the include inspired bit. As I said, they pretty much have full feature completion with Prettier there. And all we need to do here is change ESLint here to Prettier, like so. And now that we've changed that, you'll see that it really quickly adds in my rules. So it's added in the ignores that is found in the Prettier ignore, and it's added in some of my Prettier config that I have in my Prettier file. Now, there are a couple of things I want to point out here. So the first one is that organize imports option. Now, that's really cool because what you'll see is in import sorting, Biome allows sorting imports data statements using natural ordering. Now, at the moment, they don't let you configure this yourself for how you like your imports to be ordered. But I really like this because it's built into Biome because before what I've been using is a prettier plugin to order my imports using this format that I've defined here. So I am making a trade-off here, however, where I'm gonna lose essentially my custom format that I have here, but I'm sort of okay with that trade-off because I just like it to be consistent across my projects and I like it to be sorted, as I said, in that nice consistent way. So I'm used to it when I go from file to file. I'm not necessarily too attached to this exact format, but they do also have plans, I believe, to add in this formatting option later. The other really cool one is that I actually use the Tailwind plugin, which is for Prettier. So it sorts your class names in a nice order. Now Biome actually has this built in as well. So if we go back to the documentation, what you can see is they have a rule use sorted classes here. And it says this rule implements the same sorting algorithm as Tailwind CSS, but supports any utility class framework, including Uno CSS as well. So it even has support for other ones there. As it does say though, it's part of the nursery group. So it's sort of an early rule it's being worked on and that's still working on migrating some of the features over. But it's really cool to see that they have that. And again, I'm happy with that trade off of losing some of the advanced features as I know this project itself isn't too complex. So how do we get started now? Well, if we clear this, what we can now do is we can do PMPM biome check and then we can put it in our current directory. And you'll see it's gonna give me a load of errors as I know I previously haven't had ESLint set up very well in this. But what we can do is you can see in our diff at the moment, we've got these different changes. So we've added the biome and we've changed our package.json. Now, pretty much one of the main reasons I'm switching over to this for a lot of my projects is a lot of my projects are quite simple. So what we are now able to do is if I go to my dev dependencies, as you can see, we're now using biome for the linter and the formatter. I can delete this plugin sorts imports. As I said earlier, biome has support for that. I can go ahead and just delete TypeScript ESLint plugin, TypeScript ESLint parser, as I don't need them anymore, as again, the linting is all being done by Biome. I can delete all of these, which are all of the configs and plugins that I have for ESLint there. And I can even go ahead and delete lint staged and the lint staged config I have. What this was doing was making sure that when I staged files, that it would run the linter on them and run prettier on them. They actually have an option in Biome where you just do dash dash staged on the end and it will do essentially the exact same thing. So I can go ahead and delete lint staged as well. And then we can delete the prettier and the prettier plugin that I have for it. So if you see now many dependencies that I just got rid of there and it makes it a super nice clean setup. I don't have to manage all of the updates to all of these. I literally just install one package and that's why I really like this and why I'm switching over a lot of my projects. I think I have a fairly unique use case on some of mine, which is that I teach a lot of content and I don't necessarily want all of these ESLint plugins and all of these prettier plugins to be in my dev dependencies where beginners may get confused. And if they have an error with one of them, it might be confusing. Whereas if there's an error with Biome, they can just go to the Biome repo and find out how to fix that error. And if there's an update to Biome, they just have to update this one package. There's not a load of dev dependencies that they have to update and try and maintain as they go along in that beginner example. And as I said, even from a personal side point of view, that's why I'm upgrading to this as well. Other thing to mention as well is, of course, it does have a VS Code extension, so you can make sure that it's set to using Biome for all of your formatting and that it's going to show you the lint errors as well. So if I now go back and go into PMPM Biome check, I can do dash dash write. And if we write this, you're going to see it's going to format some of my files. Now it's going to change some of them a bit. A lot of it tends to be with the style. And you can see it's even catching a really cool one there where I have import metadata from next. I was actually only using the type. So it's changed it there to import type for me, which is a really nice and cool default there. And you can see that is pretty much all we have to do and commit. And I can go ahead and fix some of the ESLint errors as well. And I find it's got really nice sort of 
examples or explainers for what that error is and where to fix it as well. So if I now go into this project's data bit, you'll see that it's erroring out here because I'm using a template literal, except I'm not actually doing anything with that template literal there. So it's giving me a linting error there. So as I said, it's a really cool way to mash together Prettier and ESLint into one project there. I really like the way it cleans up my dependencies there. And if you have a really big project, you might like the way that it handles performance as well. And again, you will have to consider some of those trade-offs. So I'm gonna look into the next section, which is some of the cons of switching over to Biome, particularly when it's quite a new project. So we saw some of the advantages there, one of them being performance and the other cleaning up the complexity of sort of dependencies that we have. But it is worth noting that this is nowhere near as mature as ESLint and Prettier as obviously they've been around for years. And it does lack several features that many of you may rely on. The big one being with the replacement of ESLint, I find with Prettier, it's pretty much feature complete and does everything I need for Prettier. But with ESLint, the big loss is that ESLint plugin system at the moment. As you can see here on this page, I've got a list of their rules sources, and it does list a load of the plugins that they've tried to migrate the rules over or been inspired by them. So you can click and react, and you can see they've got a few of the rules that they're bringing over. But one of the ones that I've lost out on and why I'm not migrating some of my project is I actually used the Tailwind ESLint instead of that prettier plugin necessarily. And what that did was um, it preferred, had some extra features like enforcing shorthand. So if you had something like W-4, H-4, it would enforce that you should just use size-4 as that's the shorthand and for that rule in Tailwind. So you can see they've tried to migrate some of those over, but they do lack a plugin ecosystem at the moment. And I'm not sure if they actually plan support for plugins or because they're an opinionated formatter. So they want to bring over their own rules and just make sure they're bringing the rules that they want to bring over into this project. But you can see they have tried with some of the large big projects here. And finally, the last big one is that Rust-based linters are going to struggle when it comes to type checking. This is a feature that ESLint and TypeScript ESLint have covered. And this is because those projects can obviously spin up to ESC and go through the TypeScript code itself in a way that a performant Rust project just can't at the moment, as if the Rust project tried to spin up TSC or something like that, it would obviously impact that performance massively. You can see that they have ported over several of the TypeScript ESLint rules and they continue to add more but it is gonna be a difficult challenge for them to solve. Now, to be clear, this is only for adding lint rules to your project. Obviously the TypeScript server itself that you may have separate to that is still gonna pick up TypeScript errors, of course. So it's not changing that behavior, but where you have TypeScript ESLint using things like use naming convention, use consistent array type, they have ported those over, but there might be rules that you're using that they haven't ported over and that they may struggle to as well due to the nature of them being a Rust-based linter. So there we go, lots of potential for Biome here to catch up with the dominant Prettier and ESLint as those tools have some serious competition in the performance area to really push them to improve as well. Now, if you wanna learn more about that ESLint Tailwind plugin that I brought up earlier, why not check out this video here where I cover that? Or if you wanna see the video that YouTube thinks you should be watching, click this one. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And if you stayed until the end here, you may as well subscribe.